Welcome back to ENI UK and Europe Edition. Now for some interesting stories from around the United Kingdom. Joining us today is Love and Season to tell us more on how the city of Liverpool, home of the Beatles, is facing the current pandemic. Hello, Love and. Hi, Giancarlo, and thank you. So, Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced a three tiered system categorizing areas of England by rates of infection to try to simplify a complex web of local restrictions. The northwest city of Liverpool is the first to be placed at a very high risk and will see a ban on household mixing and pub closures from Wednesday for at least four weeks as part of a new strategy to tackle a surge in coronavirus cases. Inter-household mixing will be banned indoors and in private gardens, while pubs, bars, gyms will close from Wednesday in Liverpool, which has a population of about 1.5 million. Other areas of England will be classed either as medium, in which current nationwide rules limiting social gatherings to six will apply, or high, where different households are banned from mixing indoors. While sw whole swaths of Northern England already facing local restrictions will automatically enter the high-risk tier. People will be advised not to travel in and out of these areas. Now let's hear what the residents think about this move. Um, I think, um, you know, we had no choice. We had to go into this lockdown. We had to go into the third band. There was no choice. Boris was going to put it as in it and no matter what. So you can only trial it, see if it works, if it doesn't work. I don't know, we have to come up with another solution. I think it's a huge overreaction. I yeah. just don't think there's any need for such, a drast such drastic steps. Yeah. And I think Liverpool is not the worst place, according to the news anyway, so why they've chosen to shut down Liverpool rather than places like Nottingham, which is far worse. Or Newcastle. Or Newcastle, or, or, or Manchester. I don't know, it just seems a, a shame for Liverpool. I think basically they've had to start with somewhere and infection rates are high, hospitals are getting full. There's nothing more to say about that. It, every city's going to end up the same. Johnson addressed the nation to explain the decision. He earlier told MPs that he could not allow COVID-19 to let rip and risk the death toll, the highest in Europe at almost 43,000, spiralling even higher. Now, Britain on Tuesday announced 143 further deaths of people testing positive for the virus, the first time the daily announced toll has exceeded 100 since July. The number of cases has quadrupled in the last three weeks. There are now more people in hospitals with COVID than when we went into lockdown on March 23, said Johnson, who has faced criticism for his handling of the outbreak. Back to you, Giancarlo. Thank you, Lavan. Can we ask how is the government preparing the hospitals across the country for this second wave of COVID-19 patient admission? Well, earlier, the state-run National Health Service, NHS, announced that three field hospitals across Northern England in Manchester, Sunderland and Harrogate would be mobilized to accept new patients. They are among a string of temporary hospitals put up by the military in conference, conference centers. Testing for hospital staffs is also being stepped up in high-risk areas, as health officials warn that infection rates were rising across the country and in all age ranges, not just the young. Giancarlo? Okay, thank you, Lavan. That was a good um, step they're taking. Uh, what is the general feeling, though, from the UK, the public, in these cases where there's new total lockdowns? Well, the British public is mixed in their opinion. So like ranging from wanting the government to apply even tighter measures to some even for calling out for no further lockdowns at all. So the one thing is sure, and that is the longer the pandemic is around, the more frustrations it will bring for everyone. And this can lead to civil unrest. The government is, a very diff is in a very difficult position of striking a balance between the public health and the economy with us spending over one half times the normal national spend in this area already this year. So something that generations to come will have to face. But there is a common goal, however, to get the infection rate under control. And that will mean the effort and responsibility will have to come from everyone. Giancarlo? Thank you, Lavan, and thank you again for joining us this week.
Thank you, John Carlo, for having me. I'm Love Anne Season, reporting from London, United Kingdom. We live in interesting times. <laughs>